Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Why don't you all come sit like right there or over there? (laughs) Well, no, uh, my sermon's for the two of you. No, (laughs) No, I'm just just kidding. (laughs) We're good. You're ready. You're ready. Okay. All right. Um, Our passage in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, uh, begins at the 22nd verse, is chosen, of course, because... Uh, some believe that it goes with Catherine of Siena, who we remember on, on this day. Um, maybe because she was a mystic. Maybe that's why people thought these were good passages. Um, her inner prayer life, um, I would suggest, though, is the one that led her to serve. She became a saint not because of her vision or even her desire for the unity of the church, which she worked tirelessly for, among the many other things that she did. Uh, It was not for her service to the poor and the healing of the sick. Instead, I would argue it was because of the miraculous work that flowed through her from God. It was the grace and the mercy, power, and love that came from God through her into the world. Uh, This perhaps uh, most witnessed to by her life of caring for plague victims. Maybe that's an example of where we might see that or visitations to prisoners. She loved to go see the the prisoners, especially the ones about to die. Uh, She prayed with them. Her witness came, though, from, I think, a deep well of spiritual connectedness to God. In other words, it wasn't just, I want to do good. But it was actually a vocation that came to her in her own prayer life. Her ministry flowed from the tissue woven between God and herself in prayer. A tissue, I believe, open to all people, by the way. Um, But we might ask, what is it that gets in the way? Um, actually, I just think it's our life. Um, we're not solitaries. <laughs> uh, we're not people of wealth who can escape the world or find somebody to support us in the manner in which we'd like to be accustomed. We live with others. We love our lives. We love the people in our lives. I look around you and I think of those friends and loved ones that you you deeply care for. But there's something more, though, I, I think. It's, I think it's our identity. As clergy, we become wrapped up into it in such a way that we become unable to see that our nature is loosed from the work we do and instead believe it's the work we do that makes us. We are bishop, priest, deacon, forever. However, the work we do is not forever. It is uh, certainly not what we thought it was going to be. Uh, whatever that was, by the way. <laughs> uh, and it changes all the time. There are different seasons to it. It's actually our prayer discipline, though, that connects us with the vertical, with God in such a way as um, to enable that intentionality to quiet all of those other demands on us. And most of all, the ministry demands. Sometimes it's the ministry demands that just take it from us and until that well's dried up. There's, there's no reservoir because we haven't spent the time, the pastoral time for ourselves, the caring for ourselves, the the loving of God through prayer and worship and silence. Um, 
It's our prayer discipline that enables us to serve whatever and whomever comes our way. And in fact, it is our prayer discipline that frees us from the idea of what we thought we were supposed to be doing and allows us to take what comes. Uh, I know all of you were expecting the coronavirus, right? What a great interruption to all your plans and mine, right? (laughs) Right? And yet, I think because we had not prepared ourselves, we cursed it instead of seeing plague victims needing help. We talked about how it interrupted our lives <laughs> instead of doubling down in prayer and wondering how God was asking us to serve. In this way, praying deeply, we come unmoored from the day to day, which can be really scary. I think that's part of why we don't like it so much, <laughs> is wrestling with God in, in the desert. <laughs> uh, you get your hip put out of joint and get new names. And find out you're supposed to go uh, love your brother the next day when he comes across the plane to you. <laughs> like, it is an unsurprising, wicked, wicked relationship with the angels of the Lord that invites us to do God's ministry. Untethered from our desire for ministry to a certain way, things have to be. We become released from expectations that lead to resentment. And we're free from the game of numbers, wins and losses. It is in deep, regular, and intentional prayer that our relationship with the divine works. In other words, Catherine wasn't sitting around saying, man, I made five plague victim visits today. Right? She made one plague victim visit at a time, I imagine, as she could. And didn't think about the numbers she needed to qualify in order to get her sainthood. She just did what was in front of her. Without it, we will, I promise you, worry about our life and what we'll eat. We'll worry about our body and our clothes, and we'll worry about adding time. Um, That's where the gospel gets it right, Uh, where the manna from heaven story offers us a little idea of how uh, this manna, this prayer might last for well over 40 years. It's God's peace found in prayer that leads to action as the day progresses. It's such a, such a peace that it's beyond understanding. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and say, oh, huh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is how God wants me to be a deacon today or how God wants me to be a priest today. I would have done anything to choose something different, but this is here. And this is where it is. Well... You can tell that I live by this. I mean, I'm, I'm so spiritual. <laughs> I never grouse at the Lord or complain about what's been given me at all. No, I'm just like you. Because we're human. We're human. Catherine Osiena was a human person, too. She only became a saint much later. You have to die to get sainted. So the one thing that is completely out of your power is the only way you're going to mark the number. Uh, But I do return to it over and over again. And when things are out of whack, I know what's really wrong. And it's typically not all the other things in my life. It's how I begin my day and how I end it. Um, I'm just a bishop. Uh, and God seems to enjoy reinventing that job on an hourly basis sometimes. But I approach it with gratitude for the peace that I'm given. I am not like the lily of the field or the raven or the stag that's led to the water's edge or the sheep into green pastures. Um, but maybe over time I might glimpse a little bit of that peace and dis- disconnection from all of the to-dos. Um, like Catherine, I think miraculous things are done through us from the God we're connected to. That's not we're, we're doing them because of our love for God. It's a very different thing. Each of you does it as a response to God 
and God's connection to you. And God works through you. Um, somebody asked, uh, as I close, somebody asked one of the questions begins. I'll talk about this more tomorrow, but one of the questions begins. There was a bishop once who said he woke up every day wondering what a deacon was doing. I don't. <laughs> Just so you know. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to know. <laughs> Just <laughs> name. We are two different bishops on that count. <laughs> uh, but I do know what happens because of your work. And I get to joyfully sing the praises to God because of you. And how God manifests God's self in the lives of so many people who are touched through your ministry. So I invite you to not give up on the practice because of the busyness. Uh, but recognize somehow sainthood in this world actually is attached to your vertical connection with God. And how God sends that power and mercy through you and deepens it and grows it so that the worry of life can pass you by. And so you can serve the poor sinners, the broken, the hungry, those in prison, and those in need, shelter, and clothing, who might bump into you as the day goes on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.